Welcome to another installment of Test Chamber. I am Matt Miller. I'm joined by Joe Juba. That's me. And we are taking a look at Odin Sphere. Life Drasir? <laughs> life Left Drasir. Left 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 hander. Light left hander Odin Sphere. Okay, so it's got it's so, got a weird like Norse re- name, but it's basically it's basically a <laughs> super enhanced remaster of Odin Sphere. The, of Odin Sphere. The, the what, 2007, I think, uh, PS2 game. Uh, it's a game. Uh, what I can tell you about this game, Joe, is I played a lot of it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, played a, I played a lot of Odin Sphere when this game first came out, and it had a lot of problems, and yet I had this weird kind of love affair with it. Yeah. Um, just because of this, the, the beautiful visuals and kind of unusual setting that they had, this, this mix of different characters that you played with. Mm-hmm. Um, and this is like this isn't just like a visual upgrade, right? Right. So, what we're actually starting with here. Um, also, before we get to that, just I mean, this is obviously just a visually distinct game in so, in so many like that's that's part of what makes it so attractive in a lot of ways. It's yeah. just like the art. This is the same studio that did games like um, Muramasa and Dragon's Crown. Yep. Uh, so, yeah, that's that's a big part of just what makes it. Like it's just a gorgeous game, but the like you said, the visuals are not the only appeal for this, especially this remaster, which has made all kinds of like basically under the hood tweaks. It's actually it's a really hard thing to kind of articulate when people ask about it because they're so used to remasters just being like, oh, it's better graphics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or or if there are tweaks, it's sort of mind like oh, it has a turbo mode now or right. something like that. Um, this is more of like a fundamental reworking of the game system. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like it it plays almost completely differently. You know, it's like yeah. you're still you're it's still the same characters, the same story, the same basic structure in which you know you play through five different protagonists, uh, to basically to tell like a single kind of fairy tale story. But what we're actually looking at here, and this is another cool little feature of it, is. This game includes a classic mode. Okay. So if you're one of the many people who did not play <laughs> Odin Sphere on PS2, you can kind of see see all the ways that it's that it's been improved by doing this classic mode, which includes the sort of the better visual angle, but otherwise, like all of the game mechanics kind of remain untouched. Sure. So so basically, if you want it to, if you were one of those people who wanted a remake that was literally just I want it to look good on my PS4. Right. That's and, and resolve some of the technical problems which plagued the original because there was bad slowdown in right. the original, that kind of thing. That stuff is resolved in the classic mode, but you don't get the new gameplay. Exactly. And so what the reason why we're starting with this that I wanted to illustrate is just like I want to start here so people get an idea of what it was. Mm-hmm. So that way some of the improvements when we move over to the sort of new version of it will be that much more apparent. So like right now... I can't pick these things up because your bags are full. This was a constant problem in the old one. <laughs> yes. Um, so you have you have these. Uh, you basically only have two bags, and all of your stuff is kind of mixed together in there. Yeah. Um, I should probably equip these things. Can I only equip one thing? Yeah. Okay. So I can only have one thing equipped. Uh, but we can free up space in our inventory by let's eat some stuff. So when you eat stuff. You get experience for it, and that experience goes to your... There are basically a couple kinds of experience in this version. So there's, like, basically hit point experience and weapon experience. Right. So when you're eating, you're improving your hit point experience. So sure. just leveled up there. We got, like, our... Which was something I spent, I remember, just countless hours grinding to get more hit points because the game was hard yeah exactly so you want to you want to do as much of that as you can so your so your hit points go up that freed up some inventory space so we can pick this stuff up now um so here's another thing when you want to plant uh or one of the ways you increase your like weapon experience is by collecting something called ciphers Mm mm-hmm or uh, uh, phosons. Your weapon is your cipher. Right. So to collect the the phosons, you have to suck them in like this. There we go. Those little pink things are what you want. Now, for people who haven't played this game before, there even in this classic Whoa. mode, there's some weird stuff going on that that's worth kind of talking about. One is that you're if you look in the bottom right of the screen, 
there's a, like a circle, right? That's yeah. actually the, the the little battle stage that you are on at this moment, and it, and you can run all the way around it, right? Like exactly. Um, so it's side scrolling but circular. Yes, uh, which it actually creates this this kind of unusual dynamic for battles, especially in boss battles, where your strategy often is about sort of like, okay, if I need to get behind the enemy, sometimes I'm actually going to run all the way around yeah. the map. Yeah, if you want to like sneak up behind them or avoid attacks, you might have to you might have to do that kind of thing. And some, some of the bosses you fight have these really broad uh, sort of stage-filling attacks that you need to deal with. So you're, you're often dealing with uh, um, having to use the whole circle to move through. Um, but one of the other things I think that's, that, that isn't apparent just at first glance here is that you're playing one of five very distinct characters. Right. right? And each, each character, it's not like you choose which character you want right. to wanna play. Um, the story, it's a story. Yeah, yeah, the story follows through in a set order. One thing I want to point out about Classic Mode 2, there's a little meter up in the corner called my power meter, or mm -hmm. the POW. Every time you even do just like a normal attack. It's just going down. It drains. Yeah. So it's like you can't do a rapid sequence of attacks without sort of getting, or it's easy, to, especially in later fights, it's easy to get tired. Yeah. Um, you also need to be uh, careful about blocking because that drains it also. Well, not to mention uh, your your uh, character here um, does have a, have, a, have a pretty limited move set, right? Right. Uh, You've got this sort of basic attack and a couple things that you're taking advantage of the POW meter to do, mm -hmm. right? But it's not, I mean, I, at least what I remember from the original game, it's not an, this incredibly complex uh, string of different types of moves that you can do. Right, um, right. Which is something that more recent games from Vanillaware, I think they've, they've embraced more of some of that like kind of combo focused action. Mm -hmm. um, and when you play this classic mode, you maybe don't have that that entire sense of things. Right. Exactly. And I want to show this too. So like if you want to buy something, mm -hmm. you need to work on, I may not be able to do it because my bags, I think my bags are full, but oh no, here we go. So if I want to buy this, you actually have like specific coins that are worth different amounts. So right. you need to like manage. Yeah. I mean, it's sort, sort of like a weird legacy of old school D and D. Yeah, right? exactly. It's like gold and silver, and so like, if you don't have the right coins or the right amount, it, it just gets, it gets frustrating. I bring that up because that's fixed. Also, yeah. Um, we're gonna switch back to the new version here pretty quick, but um, one thing that I wanted to show uh, in this stage that's important is so plant like seed cultivation yes. was a big part of this game i remember that so you basically need to be like okay i mean i'm these seeds grow when they absorb phosons the same thing that increases your weapon level so if you want to use those phosons to increase your hit point level instead you need to plant a seed in a in a scene where you know there's going to be where phosons are going to come out you right know? like so when there are enemies when there's a battle and that's what's that's going to sort of fuel the plant's growth right is, I think, the idea, right? Exactly. Okay, so now... There, so that plant, as we're fighting these guys... It's your murdering fairies. Yeah. Absorbed... It absorbed the phosons that have been floating around. There we go. And now I get... Now I can get those mulberries. So, that's sort of just a really quick rundown of, like, some of the basic mechanics of the original version, which I think is going to be will help you appreciate some of the quality of life changes that... Uh, <laughs> I mean, in many ways, it, it, it's sort of a, a novelty more than anything else. I mean, would you recommend anyone actually play through the whole game not, with this? Not as your first time through, for sure. I okay. mean, like, like if you played the original and loved it, it, I think it has some nostalgia value. Sure. But, like, to any sort of modern player, I would recommend the, the, the new version, yeah. which we'll take a look at right now. All right, we have switched over to what they call refined mode, which is kind of a silly name. Yeah, but it it really is a, a, a lot better. As, as it's more than refined. Yeah, it really is. So we'll get we'll get to that in a second. So this is fairly late in the in the final uh, final chapter or yes. in, in the final not even chapter like the final character. Sure. Um, there's even more to the game after that a little bit, but. Um, the, the interesting thing is you meet all of the characters... Through the course of the story, you meet characters before you actually control them. 
right? So it's right. like, this character's name is Velvet. And you actually, I believe you meet her in G- Gwendolyn's story. Uh, right. Gwendolyn being the character we were playing in the original mode there. Um, but so it's kind of cool that after you've been playing the game for a while, you still, you actually like get to control these characters that you've met. Absolutely. So now let's talk about combat because yeah. things are getting way better. So instead of just having a limited sort of skill set like we had before, um, we now have, I'm just going to bring this up so we can take a look. There's just this whole array Sweet. Uh, of, uh, of of skills that you learn and invest you invest in. So instead of just absorbing phosons like before and having them go directly to your cipher level, you can upgrade your cipher manually here. Yeah. But you can also invest those phosons in this like variety of different skills. So and it looks it looks like it's not just one. Uh, one set. It's different for each character, right? Right. Uh, some of them are similar. Sure. Um, but there's some some unique powers for each character. Right. And characters have different sort of uh, what's the way like 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 different specialties. So one of the things, for instance, for Velvet, is that like a lot of her abilities and powers are focused on like setting people on fire, <laughs> and then doing more damage to That's them awesome. while they're on fire. Yeah. You know. Yeah, Velvet's sort of like this like magic user kind of character, right? Right, and she has uh, her weapon is a lot reminds me a little bit of like Kratos. Or yeah, something, sure, you know? it's She's like the chain like the, blade kind of thing. Yeah. Um, so, man, so lots of lots of cool things to talk about in terms of in, improvements with that. So, in addition to the skills, another awesome thing is the way the inventory is structured. Mm-hmm. Now, instead of just having one bag, things are sort of Orga- like organized more clearly. Mm-hmm. Um, also, instead of just having, um, instead of needing to plant seeds before battle so they can absorb phosons, mm-hmm. you can now just plant them whenever, and you can shoot out your phosons <laughs> if sure. you want to. So you can basically like, you know, grow Make things whenever grow. you want. Because it it would happen in the old game that you'd like plant a plant and then. It wouldn't like your battle wouldn't generate enough phosons, and then it's just sort of wasted because mm-hmm. then you you wouldn't be able to like get it out. So, uh, so one of the one of the things that I think a lot of people uh, either heard about Odin Sphere, or um, or if they played it, they certainly remember it, uh, was that there was some the the battle had a tendency towards like slow down. Right, and right? that yeah, you won't you won't see that here, or if you do, it's more of like. An intentional effect, rather like, like than... what we're seeing right now, right? Right. Like that's not right. slow down. It's it's sort of like imitating that kind of anime esque uh, uh, pause effect that happens when a big hit happens, right? Um, which is pretty cool. You also, I mean, just visually here, whether you're talking about the classic mode or the refined mode, this is running in you know 1080p, and it just looks significantly better yeah for sure for sure oh man so the combat i'm, I'm sorry i i just get it, it it's pretty amazing to me how much more interesting the combat becomes for all of the characters once you add once you add those skills um and and the and the character sort of different specialties you know yeah. like the whole the whole fire angle on velvet um there's another character the one that i i think is the most uh, the most interesting is Oswald, mm-hmm. the the Dark Knight, who a lot of his abilities are focused on like enhancing this berserk mode that he has, sure. which makes fight. He's a little bit he's a little less intuitive to control. I feel like, but um, he's it, it's interesting, you know. Now, what about uh, I talked a little bit earlier about like when I played the original game, I did a lot of grinding. Yeah. Uh, when you played through this for the review of the new version, did you have to do a lot of grinding to kind of make progress? Uh, no, in fact, basically no grinding. Okay. Um, one of the big one of the big reasons that 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 happens here. I want to just do a different. I want to show off some yeah, of these some other cool abilities because we have we have a lot of them. It lets you map. You can see there on the right. It lets you map four of them. Sure. But you can also just activate any of them whenever you want from by, the menu. Yeah, I mean they consume resources, but you know. Yeah, a lot of us are really cool. It's still cool. Um, so. About the grinding, one of the big things that changes that is it used to be that in the original version, one of your main ways of like increasing your uh, your strength and your hit points and all that stuff 
was cooking, but you could only do cooking between stages, mm -hmm. which meant that, you know, like you would basically have to do a lot of grinding to get ingredients and stuff during a stage and then level up and then go back to the stage and do, you know, gather more ingredients if you wanted them. Um, and one of the things that makes this one easier, we're actually going to go check this out right now, is that there's a, there's an, in like each map has at least one, usually several uh, rest areas like this. And the rest areas have this traveling chef, which nice. was not in the game before. So now... Yeah, because the chef was like back at town. Right. right. And that and that's still there. Mm -hmm. But that for that, you just pay money and you... It, the chef that you used to have to give ingredients to, you now just pay this money that is only used for buying meals. It's not used for your other currency and hmm, stuff. Interesting. Um, that's how sort you do like that. Sort of like forcing you, not forcing you, but like encouraging you to in engage with the cooking thing. Right, but it also just gives you free, I mean, it's, it's basically guaranteed level up. As you play through the stage, you will gather that currency that can only be used to buy food. Mm -hmm. So then between stages, you will always be able to buy at least some, you know, some meal and get some sort of like, you know, uh, uh, increase to your, to your abilities. But for this, now in the stages, you basically have what the system used to be uh, before, which is just like you gather a bunch of ingredients and you can you can cook stuff. You can see I don't have a lot of a lot of the stuff right now, but we can make. Uh, let's see, what are we gonna do? This is making me hungry, Joe. Yeah, a lot I, of stuff looks pretty good. Let's have some spicy chicken. Yeah, so you order up a spicy chicken, and the way one of the cool things this works, you see the experience down there at the bottom. Yep, is that like the first three times that you cook something, you get like some bonus experience. So it tries oh. to, you know, like encourage you to try and make different things. Sure. Variety is uh. the spice of life. <laughs> exactly. As they say. Uh, can I just say, can I just pause for a second and say like how adorable this little cook is? He's pretty great. I love, I love the character designs in this game. They're just so like, like, these these crazy archetype hero characters mm -hmm. um and then all, all the other sort of surrounding secondary cast are so weird and exaggerated yeah. um it's a lot of fun yeah well and we've we've talked about this before or you and i have uh, about like one of the interesting things about this game is that it's it's got like some heavy sort of like fairy tale storybook elements to it, right? Yeah, so absolutely. The visuals obviously sort of have that like illustrated feel to them, but the story also is very. Um, <laughs> I, I don't know if shallow is exactly the way to put it. It's but childlike. Yeah, I mean, it, it does not spend a lot of time with character development. It no. does. A, it does a lot of like tell don't show. The characters talk about their motivations, but don't. You you can't just. There's not character development necessarily. Yeah, I, I recall it being. It, it's not that. It's not that it's a great story, but it is. Uh, it's engaging in a weird way because it, it, it is so much this kind of like this simple, fun fairy tale with a with a big cast, right? Like yeah. It, 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 there's lots of different characters and lots of sort of epic moments of you know fighting a dragon or big betrayals or main care you know some of the main characters that appear to die and oh well, maybe they're not dead and going down into the underworld it draws uh, draws on sort of like classic mythology yeah in that regard um and so even even when the the story isn't great uh it does i remember it being sort of like weirdly fun um yeah. and in my mind the story is one of the things. So I went back and read my original review of yes. Odin's Fear, <laughs> and the story is one of the things that I that I praised on it a lot. Sure. And it's kind of funny how how time changes that sort of thing because like now, it it does not strike me as a particularly like remarkable part of the game. Yeah, I mean, well, decade um, in, in game design and story narrative design is a long time. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, what uh, the, what the things were that we thought were really great storytelling, um, even ten years ago, it's, it's kind of different now. Yep. Um, yep, for sure. I but I do say, still think it's charming. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. Another thing that I wanted to point out about it is um, something else that does not about the game that does not hold up super well. Okay. Is the repetitive structure of it? Sure. Um, which is something I really wanted to bring up because. You play these five heroes, and even though they play differently and have different abilities for the most part, 
they're they're not doing very different things in terms of the enemies they're fighting or their surroundings. So like there's basically a handful of levels. There's, you know, like the level we're in now, the like Titanian capital. Mm -hmm. You know, there's there's the the lava level, there's the ice mountain level, there's the, you know, like nebulopolis or whatever. Like uh -huh. so each character, like when you beat one character, you start over with a new one. And that character starts over at level zero or, you know, like level one. And you just need to like build up, like go through the same levels, build up their skills and stuff all over again. Sure. Um, playing through the same levels, fighting for the most part, the same bosses. Um, and that, that sort of repetition was a problem in the original one. And like, that is one thing that's, structure is something that they just weren't either willing or able to fix for for this one sure you know well and, and that it really would be an even more fundamental reworking of the game if not a sequel at that point which, right which by the way i would be just fine with a sequel to odin sphere <laughs> uh vanillaware uh not that i expect it's ever going to happen but um I have a great, I have a great fondness for the many hours that I, I spent on this game back in the day. Yeah. Um, and you know, with the addition of all these kind of like new skills that I could explore with the characters, and it's been long enough with the kind of fairy tale story that there's some of those beats that I, I think would be kind of fun to go back to and and experience again. Yeah, um, for sure. Makes me excited about checking this out. Yeah, I mean, I highly recommend it. And one of the things that I wanted to, sort of the, the bottom line recommendation on this game is that, like, because of things like the story and that repetitive structure, holding it up against a, a modern game, like, it still feels, you can still feel the 10-year-old game at its core, mm -hmm. you know? But in terms of just, like, a remaster, this is probably, like, the best and most comprehensive approach to remastering a game that I've seen yet. Yeah. You know, I mean, like, it's really a good example of a developer singling out, like, where the where an original sort of needed improvement and going to great lengths to make it, um, you know, to make it the game that that it can be. Absolutely. Uh, so, Way yeah. to go, Vanillaware. Way to go. I had, a, I had a great time, great time playing this again. Uh, and you know, for people who didn't play the original, I, I think this is a great a great way to sort of check it out. Awesome. Well, I think that'll do it for us. That's a pretty good look at the new Odin Sphere Lift Receer, Life <laughs> Receer, uh, Left Hander mode. Yeah, whatever we want to call it. Uh, it's good. Uh, and so, uh, thanks for watching, and we will see you next time on Test Chamber.